Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This episode, we're going to be looking at one of my favorite little spiders out there, the Hopalopus species Columbia Large or Hopalopus formosus, also known as the Pumpkin Patch Tarantula. I love that common name, one of my favorite common names. And honestly, it was that common name that got me to check these guys out in the first place. When I first heard it, I was into much larger tarantulas. It was kind of that bigger is better type thought process. And I saw these guys, saw they were small, but saw pictures of them and was just absolutely enamored by their appearance. And as a huge fan of the holiday Halloween, I definitely had to get some. So what I did is I bought three. I got two females. One of those females was the first spider I ever successfully paired. We had a sack of, I believe, 350 plus babies. And this is one of the babies here that we're about to rehouse. She's a grown adult female now and getting kind of old. And I want to get her into something a little different. Now, just a word on the enclosures in this, because every time I switch up enclosures, people think that it means the old enclosures are bad. Not at all. One of the favorite parts or my favorite parts of the hobby is finding new things to put my spiders in and display them in. I've kind of at a point in my collection where I have as many spiders as I'm going to get for a while. And so I invest more of my money into finding new enclosures and being able to report on them to you all so that you know what's out there. And in this case, I found something I want to put her in that gave it a, gave her a little more room to play and web. The other enclosures, which are the Exoterra Nano Smalls, they're not bad enclosures. I still have a couple of them that I'm still using. Using, but I'm just kind of moving away from them in favor of things I like a little bit better at the moment. Who knows? I'll probably go back to them in the future. So the Hopalopus formosus is a new world species from Colombia. It is a small terrestrial, but they'll do some heavy webbing, a little bit of digging, and they only reach about four inches or so, which make, in some folks' mind makes them a dwarf species. Their temperament is shy, but very, very skittish. One of the few spiders that I've had that is actually bolted out of the enclosure, rather it's deeper into the enclosure when disturbed. Usually spiders will run back and retreat to their burrows or their hides when you disturb them, either through feeding or maintenance. These guys have had ones actually bolt out. And as you'll see, this one here kind of does something I haven't had a spider do in a long time. It was a bit of a wake-up call to me. So they can be a little bit of a handful. So folks will ask me, are they good beginner species? A lot of beginners start with them and do fine with them, but just know that they can be teeny tiny slings. They're a little moisture dependent as babies. And they have that little skittish attitude that you have to be aware of. And they can be quite quick for small spiders. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at Hopalopus formosus or the pumpkin patch tarantula. All right, so we're about to rehouse Hapalopus species, Columbia large or Hapalopus formosus. For a while, these were in the United States under the name Hapalopus species, Columbia large. And although many suspected they were Hapalopus formosus, we weren't quite sure. A lot of times with a hobby, people find stuff in the wild. They're not sure if it's the right species, so they don't want to rush to calling it a certain species name. And I think that's what happened to these guys. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, a lot more folks now in the U.S. are selling them under Hapalopus formosus. But anyway, they're known under the common name, which is one of my favorite common names, the pumpkin patch, adorable little spiders, ones that attracted my attention. Many, many years ago, I got three slings, grew them up. I had two females, one of which was B. Arthur, who was my big girl. That was the one that I bred in June of 2016. Well, bred her in April of 2016. She had babies, 350 plus, if I remember correctly. It's a huge sack of little babies in June 2016. And this one here, they were about to rehouse that I almost had beautiful footage of her sitting right out in the open. But then I don't know what happened. She got spooked and went back into her burrow. But this one here is one of those babies. Unfortunately, I think I held on to four of them and got three males and this girl here. So this is the last one I am now considering parent because I just realized she's pushing seven years old. And unfortunately, this species is rather fast growing. And I don't know how much longer she'll live. I think my E. Arthur, I want to say, was eight and a half or so. And she died the other one right around the same spot. So they both kind of went at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take her, as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm kind of moving a little bit away from the Exoterra what are they, nanos and the eight by eight by eight ones. There's nothing wrong with them. I want to make that very clear because every time I do this and say something like this, people freak out. It's just sometimes you find something you like a little bit better. This is going to give her a little bit more space. She's decent size now, probably about three and a half, four inches or so. So I'm going to give her a little more space, a little more room to web. And as you can see, this is a species that will do some decent webbing on the surface. Now, I'm not going to go into full husbandry. What I will do is at the end of this video, I will put a link. I did a whole special episode of the husbandry on these guys, including the breeding and everything. And not much has changed. I haven't changed anything since then. So that still holds. It's still, I think, good information. So I'm not going to bother trying to redo it all. And she is somewhere. In, oh, there she is. There she is. All right, get ready. These guys will boogie. She's going to stress bar. 
could probably pick this whole mess up. Oh, no, there she is. No, nope. some more. Oh. The dual wheel here. Can you see her? No, I don't think so. Oh, <laughs> oh, I, I know the <laughs> angle I was at. I couldn't I like, see. Wait a minute, is that another molt? Um, hopefully, she'll show up a little bit. I love the looks of these guys. This is one of those ones. The nice thing is they're very, very easy to raise up. They are very hardy spiders. They are gorgeous spiders. They're cool spiders. They're rather inexpensive, although I think they went up a little bit recently. When I had my sack of mine, I was all excited because I was producing a sack. And at that time, it must have been everybody else in the United States had a sack. So they were like literally giving them away at that point. But awesome spiders grow quickly. They start off really teeny tiny. But fun fact, they are actually, they start with their adult colors which is not the case with most species of sling. So when they come out right out of the, you know, from egg with, eggs with legs to their second instar, that second instar, they have some of those adult colors. How's she showing up? Let me throw a little extra light on. Artificial flat. I don't know. Sometimes it makes them look cool. Sometimes it makes them look dumb. How's it looking? It's good. But you can see that butt that gives them the common name pumpkin patch. Perfect little Halloween tarantula with the name pumpkin patch. And that's honestly, I had heard the name before I actually saw the spider. And like, I have to have this, obviously a huge fan of the Halloween and just gorgeous little spider. So these guys, I won't, I don't like to use the term attitude because I don't, I've never had one that's defensive, but they can be very, very skittish. And I've had folks report and I've seen it myself where most spiders, where they bolt, they bolt into their burrows. I've seen these guys bolt out of their enclosures, which is weird. I don't have that happen very often, but this girl's been actually really good with all that. I don't think I've ever had that issue. So what we're going to try to do is get simply limeade in there, and it's not going to work. Hmm. Let's see if I can get more of this stuff out of here. I'm going to take a little bit of the webbing here. Yeah. This is something I've been doing lately, and I've spoken to other folks who kind of do the same thing. And... The theory is you take some of their webbing, it makes it a little more homey. I mean, there's some their web is in there, they recognize their webbing, it might help them settle in a little more quickly. I have seen evidence that spiders will go in and start webbing right around, they'll dig under here and start webbing from there, and they'll keep that old webbing, which is nice because it helps them. We want them to settle in as quickly as possible. All right, so how are we gonna get this? If we open the door, hmm. There we go. Big old booty. There we go. You can see probably, yeah, probably pushing four inches. This is one of those species, and I've had this discussion. They're known as a dwarf species. There is a smaller version, Hapalopus species, Columbia Klein, I think it is. It's German for small. I probably pronounced it wrong. So for the German folks out there, my huge apology. But that would be considered a dwarf species. I believe the females only get to be about two inches or so. That's a dwarf. This one here, four inches, it's kind of just a small tarantula. I think what gives this one a more dwarfy appearance, if that's a thing, is the fact that it has a larger body and kind of shorter legs, which gives it that kind of dwarf look to it. So what we're going to do here is undo this. No, this is, I can just see this going poorly already. There you go. Oh, right in the thing. That was perfect. <laughs> Boom. And she went right in the, so there's no, did you get good footage of her before? I was hoping to get some. Yeah, I got some great footage of her. Yeah. So that's the, usually I have the cardboard over it, but uh, unfortunately she got out. So you got to be careful with that. But let's turn around and see if we can see her. So what I put in here. This is one of the, what is the tarantula, primal tarantula, primal, primal fear, fear tarantula enclosures are selling in Canada now. So for folks that are looking for the acrylic enclosures that we've had over here in the U.S. for quite some time, I like these. But what we have here is I have two cork bark rounds. Actually, what I took is a bigger, older cork bark round I had cut in half. So I have one on this side, one over here. I have noticed mine like the cork bark rounds. So I continue to use it over here. And then I have another piece of, this was a little cork bark round I was going to use way too small, but it just kind of gives it some real estate to web around. Because what's probably going to happen, she may not do any burrowing, but she may go ahead, start webbing around here, up in here, and we'll get that thing completely covered in web like she did with the other one. And then we have 
green sphagnum moss, not the brand I usually use. I usually use the Galapagos brand, but I picked up a bag of this because it was super cheap and works great, but I'm probably going to go back to the Galapagos. Galapagos just it got a little more difficult to obtain. And then the substrate is my personal mix. It is cocoa fiber, peat, sand, and then I basically took some New Zealand sphagnum moss and used scissors and shredded it all up and mixed that in there. And I put a lot in there because originally I was going to put a fossorial species in here. She probably won't. Eh, she did a little digging in here, but not much. They kind of just basically excavate the burrow out a little bit. She'll bring a little dirt up, have a little shallow burrow in there, and probably web all around it. So these guys are, again, as I mentioned earlier, very, very fast growers. They're great eaters. Even my little teeny tiny slings were great eaters. As adults, they'll wrestle down with large crickets. No problem. I even dropped in a medium dubia once, and they took it down. No problem. Really, really great eaters. And the lifespan on this one, as I mentioned earlier, eight, one of the things I've been trying to look at is the realistic lifespan of some of the tarantula species we have. I know what happens is people put out there just these arbitrary numbers, like 12 to 15 years, uh, 20 years, whatever. We know there are some species that live a very, very long time, but I think some of them it's variable, just like human beings, it's variable. So you may have a human that dies at 75 of natural causes. You may have one that dies at 105 of natural causes. It's trying to find that sweet spot of what you can realistically expect. And I've spoken to several people. I know the males, one of the things you can look at for how long a species lives is how long it takes the males to mature and pass away. I had a male mature and I think it was just around 14, no, it was 11, 11 months, I think. And then somebody else I knew it was around the six or seven month mark. So that's really, really early. So it means males don't live particularly long. If you kind of look at the females, eight, nine years is a pretty good time. So hopefully she'll enjoy the rest of her life in here. And maybe I'll think about pairing her. We'll see. I might just end up buying little slings. So there you go. Hopalopus species, Columbia large or Hopalopus formosus. Awesome little spiders. Again, one I will always have one of these in my collection. Probably pick up some slings. Actually, I'll probably just pick up some slings now. So I'm not left without one, but I definitely encourage anybody that's looking for a cool, smaller tarantula, you know, uniquely built, uniquely colored to definitely check these guys out. So one thing I just want to point out is as anybody who's watched me do rehousings before probably noticed in that video, I made what could have been a really bad error in not covering the back of that container. Normally when you're using a catch cup or what I got there is a catch bottle, you always put a piece of cardboard over the bottom of it to make sure the spider can't go in case the spider goes up. And that's something spiders do sometimes do. They'll go up. So in this case here, when I opened up or had the back of it open, it didn't cover it. It bolted back up. Now what happened was as I flipped the bottle over, the spider just went right into the hide. It looked like I knew exactly what I was doing. That was totally luck, totally chance. That spider easily could have ended up on my arm, on my back, or could have fallen off to the ground, which would have probably resulted in its death. So that was not a good moment for me. And I want to point that out there because it's a wake up call. I've, watching the video back while I was doing the editing, it made me cringe because that was easily preventable. So wake up, call to me, look in future videos, won't be making that mistake again. And that's what happens when you get a little bit complacent. So that's just something I want to point out, especially to new folks who may not normally watch my rehousings. Now that is the first time in a long, long time I've had one come back up the cup, but it can always happen. You always got to prepare for it. The other thing I want to point out is that the reason why I didn't get big into husbandry on this one is because I did a very lengthy and I think thorough husbandry video on these guys in 2020 and not much has changed since then. So at the end of the video, I will probably put the little link to it down in here for folks that want more information on the husbandry, including the pairing of them. And then one more thing, I want to give a shout out to get well soon to Joyce. Joyce has been a long time subscriber and commenter comments on every single videos. And I think she's been doing it since I had like a thousand subscribers. So somebody I look forward to hearing from every time I post a video up. She's had an injury. Joyce, I hope you're up and better soon. And then at some point we got to get you a tarantula. I know you've been eyeing him for a long time. Maybe this is the thing you need to kind of get one. It'll be a get well present. That will do it for this one. As always, if you liked enough to subscribe, very much appreciate it. You click the little circle up in there. I will put the old husbandry video up in here, something else up in here. If you take the time to comment, I'll take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days because I get a lot of comments and I get busy. That'll do it for this one, guys. Stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.